Let's talk about exponents. Have you ever seen this one? Three out of two people have trouble with fractions. Ha! Oh. All right, so let's actually go and do this. So we have exponent rules. And maybe it helps to actually explain what an exponent is, what it is that I mean by this. So we could have something like uh, x, for example, to the power of 3. And in fact, we can, we, can, we can say this directly. We can say it in words. I'm just trying to show you the, the, so the meaning of it. So if we say x to the power of 3, this is what we mean. We have this thing here. So let's, actually, let's start labeling things here. Let's look at this. This one right here. We call this x, we call that the base. And then this right here, we call it the exponent. So that's this thing to itself to its power. So what I mean by this is like if I said x squared, what I really mean is this is x times x. If I say x cubed, it means it's x times x times x. So it's how many times you multiply by yourself. Okay, so if we have something like a to the b, so here are the rules here. These are not in your formula booklet, so you do need to know these. These are the ones we need, at least for the SL. For HLs, there's a fractional exponents as well, but although I've got fractional exponents here, we can deal with these. And in fact, uh, we should be able to deal with these, even though we don't know how to exactly. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. a to the b times a to the c. These both have the same base. Do you see that? This, this right here, this bottom number right here is called the base. That's because it's at the base of it. It's like holding it up. I think of it that way. You know, it's something that actually holds something up. So a to the b times a to the c. And if I have a to the b times a to the c, because they have the same base, we have a rule for this. We can say it's a to the power of b plus c. This is our first of our important exponent rules we need. Let me show you how to put it into practice. That's why I have this example here. So what if I have 2 to the 5 times 2 to the x? Now it only works if you have the same base. So watch out for that. Okay, make sure it's they're both 2s. Okay, we're fine. And what do we do? Well, I could say it's 2 to the power of, and I use this rule, right? I add them. So I say 5 plus x. That's it. Anytime you have same base, there you go. If we have a same base, this time we're dividing. Okay, so this is very much... Uh, it's a similar idea. If you multiplied two numbers and you ended up adding the exponents, what do you think you do for dividing? I hope you can see we will subtract in this case. So we'll say b minus c. So that's another rule we need to know how to use. Uh, this is supposed to be revision for you. You should have seen this before. But I think it's a good idea to remind you. So let's say I have x to the 3 over x to the 5. Well, same base, right? So what do I do? It's to the power of 3 minus 5. That's what I have to write. So 3 minus 5. Now, because I know what 3 minus 5 is, that gives me negative 2. So I'll say it's equal to x to the power of negative 2. Now, if you're in SL, you can just leave it that way. Actually, you can also say or. You can also rewrite it. We'll learn why that is in a second. You could say x squared. That's also correct. Let's do the next one. a to the b to the power of c. Do you see? Ha ha. I'm taking an, a base, I'm raising it to an exponent, and raising that to an exponent. Well, in this case, what we do, we multiply the two. So we say it's b times c. Maybe I'll just say bc. Sometimes a dot is not very clear with if it's a dot product or something. We should be careful here. So this is a to the power of b to the power of c is a to the bc. What does that mean here? Strictly speaking, uh, you're not supposed to have to do uh, fractional exponents, at least as exponent rules for SL. HLs do. But this is an example we could perfectly do it because you'll see it works out nicely. Watch. If we do x to the power of 1 half to the power of 4, this is absolutely uh, relevant. This could be easily be asked on an exam for SLs even. So let's say you have x to the 1 half to the power of 4. What will we do there? Well, we recognize the rule. We say, ah, I do base, and I multiply 1 half times 4. So I'll actually write it down. So 1 half you know, times 4. Now the rule for multiplying is that I 1 times 4 is 4. And I just multiply the top, and then the bottom, well, there's just a, a denominator, is just 2. Well, what's 4 over 2? 4 over 2 is just 2. So you see it works out to just bx squared. So we sort of got rid of the fraction, so that kind of worked out nice. 
Here's the one that I think is, is a problem for a lot of students. That's why I'm going to spend a little bit more time on it here. This one right here, a to the power of negative b. This one's really important. It's the one that tripped, trips people up. If you see a negative exponent, what it really means is that thing is on the bottom. So in other words, this a to the negative b is the same thing as saying a to the b on the bottom. Now there's just a 1 on the top. So this right here will be the, the case. So the way I think of it is whenever I see a negative exponent, I just think, oh, that thing, I just usually just hide the negative. I just cover it with my finger, just imagine you sort of you just cover it with your thumb. And then you say, oh, it's 1 over that thing. So it's 1 over a to the b. In this case right here, let's take a look at a straightforward example. We have x to the minus 3. Well, that's the same thing as saying, let's see, I cover that and say, oh, it's 1 over x cubed. Okay, that's what this negative exponent means. However, what do we do if we have a number in front? A lot of students want to put that on the bottom. It all depends on your brackets. It all depends on your um, parentheses. For example, if I went like this, whole different story, that would just be 1 over 2b, all that you know, to the fourth. But that's not what I said here. You notice this right here, this will often come up, where you have a number 2. This 2 is actually not in the exponent. Now this exponent minus 4 is only for the b here, just the way it's written right now. If I had put uh, parentheses around it, different story, but there's no parentheses. Because of that, all we can say is, well, the 2 is on the top, so it remains on the top. It just hangs out. And it's the b to the minus 4, that's the one that goes down to the bottom, becomes b to the 4. That's how we do it. So I hope that helps. Now I've got a little trick for you. This right here is not precisely for SL, but it's for sure for HL. This is something that's uh, important to know, but um, so I'm going to show you really, really quickly what to do. If you're SL, bear with me because I've got some questions afterwards that are for everyone. So let's take a look right here. This is actually uh, not so bad at all to do. We just use this idea that if we have the same base, turns out we can set the exponents equal to each other. So if I say 3 to the x equals 3 to the 3, guess what I can do? I can say x equals 3 directly. I can say the top sequel that sums. This one right here, same base, so I can ignore them basically. I can say, ah, that exponent, 1 minus x, that one equals 5. Well, what do I do then? I move my minus x to the right, move my 5 to the left, so I have uh, 1 minus 5. Basically, uh, x will be, let's see, the 5 moves over here. So it'll be 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. There we go. That would work. That would be a really fast way to do it. How about this one right here? This is maybe not obvious. I need to get them both in the same exponent, or same base, I mean. Right now, there's not the same base. But if you're clever about it, you think, ah, 9. Can I write that as a expo uh, some sort of exponent of 3? And I can. 9 is the same thing as saying 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. So you see, by being clever like this, you go, oh, this is the same as this. And now I can see, aha, x equals 2. Do you see how easy that was? That's a way to do it. Same thing, idea, same idea here, except it looks more complicated, but it's not really. If I write 27 as 3 to the power of 3, because that's what 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. Look, same base, so I set the exponents equal. So I have 2x plus 1 equals 3. And let's see, I'm going to do 2x equals, I'll move my 1 over, that gives me a 2, because I subtract. And then I divide by 2, so I just end up with x equals 1. Isn't that nice? So that was just a little trick for the HLs. Uh, for everyone, for SL and HL, here we go. By the way, I love this, time flies. It's so clever. <laughs> I wish I had this on a watch, that would be awesome. These are the kind of questions we all need to be able to handle. So let's do this. 2 to the 3 times 2 to the negative 6. You have to remember now, I have two things with the same base. So it's going to be 2. But what do I do? I multiply the exponents when they've been like this. In other words, that's this first rule here in action. So let's go and do that. I multiply the two things. Uh, sorry, not multiply. I meant to say add. So 3 minus 6. That's what I meant to say. So 3 minus 6, what is that? That's minus 3, isn't it? So I can say 2 to the minus 3. Now I could stop there. Technically this is right. I just want to fix up my writing here. This is technically right. You could also say it's, let's see, remember your negative exponent rules? This is 1 over 2 to the 3. So it all depends, I guess, how far you want to go. You could say it's this. This is correct. This is also correct. And you can keep going. What's 2 to the power of 3? That's 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2 again, which is 8. So actually you could say it's 1 over 8. That's the same thing.
Let's do this one in the parentheses. Notice though carefully, there's a parentheses around this. That's why I wanted to show you this. Something to an exponent, don't forget here, it's everything squared. So the three also gets squared. I want to write that down for just so you see this. Three squared times x squared. That's really what we do when we have an, a, a parentheses here. It's three squared x squared. So don't forget about that. Well, three squared is just nine. So it's just nine x squared. Just to show you what happens here. How about this? Five to the seven divided by five to the six. I like to actually write it as a formal fraction. Like it's five to the seven over five to the six. I like to see it that way. That's just that's just me. Now same base. So I can use this rule that when I divide two uh, things with the same base, then I can subtract the exponents. So seven minus six. Well, seven minus six is just one, so it just becomes five to the one. So it's just five. Hooray because it's five times itself once. How about this one? Sounds complicated, but it's not. Remember what we do here. We say the base here, and we have an exponent to an exponent. So what happens? I have my one half. Remember what we do here? I multiply. So away I go. I'm going to multiply these two numbers. One half times two. Well, that's the same thing as saying, let's see, four to the power of well, one times two is just two. We divide by two still. And what's two over two is just one. So actually, the answer is just 4. That's the same thing. Now, if you really want to see it, you could have rewritten this. You could have said, hey, if you knew about uh, fractional exponents, so HLs, they'll be for sure doing lots with that. If you do fractional exponents, like something to the power of 1 half, it turns out it's the same thing as saying square root of 4. And then we're squaring it. So what happens then? Well, square root of 4 is just 2. So see, it's just 2 squared, which is 4. Ta-da! So there's lots of different ways to look at it. I'm trying to do it the way we would do it as a SL student. Just to show you here, we just have to multiply these two numbers. All right, so we had 1 half times 2, and that's how we did it. I hope this helps. I hope this makes things more clear for you. But these are the rules you really need to know how to use for SLs. Okay, These are really, really important.